The next environmental issue that we're going to be dealing with is Title V. So Title V is our uh, next topic. Now, first I want to start off with really quickly just a, a visual diagram just to kind of uh, point out a couple things about uh, a septic system. Uh, in essence, a septic system is made up of a couple different components. It's always beneficial for a you know, real estate professional to know this. Now, for folks that practice in areas, rural areas and suburban areas that have the septic systems, you guys are very well aware of this. Uh, and for folks that are more city practitioners, uh, obviously we don't have septic systems here in the city. So, you know, having an understanding, you might do a transaction in the suburbs and you might have to do the Title V inspections. So it's kind of important to understand how the system fundamentally works. So in this diagram that you guys are looking at, the larger picture in this diagram, uh, a septic system is made up of a large septic tank. It's made up of a, many of them have distribution boxes, and a piping system. One is a non-perforated pipes, and the other ones are perforated pipes. And the way it, it works is all of the house's waste, basically, goes from a, you know, a series of pipes into the septic tank. The heavy substances, uh, the sludge, kind of sink to the bottom, and the light stuff kind of floats up to the top. The light stuff is called effluent. The effluent goes up, rises above the sludge. The sludge gets pumped out on a regular basis. And there's rules of how often you need to get your septic tanks pumped uh, here in the Commonwealth and every other state that has septic laws. The effluent, the light stuff, goes into a pipe that's connected to the top portion of the septic tank and it starts to flow into a distribution box. Now that pipe is non-preferated pipes. So this stuff goes into a distribution box, some people just call it a D-box. And from the D-box, the effluent gets distributed throughout the property into a series of perforated pipes. And in these perforated pipes, we call this a drain field. What ends up happening is the uh, natural bacteria gets introduced to the effluent and it breaks down uh, the, uh, the dangerous stuff naturally. And then the water flows back into the ground where it percolates and it goes and ultimately gets reintroduced into the groundwater table and recycled. So they're very efficient on-site waste disposal systems and that's the basic definition of what a septic system is. Now here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Department of Environmental Protection who has oversight over uh, the uh, septic systems in the Commonwealth needs uh, and requires by law that the septic systems be inspected. What happens is over time, I mean think about it, these things are living underground. Many times consumers don't even realize where the tank is on their property and they have an effective life. I mean many septic systems after 20 years are, are, have lived beyond their effective life and uh, the tank could develop cracks or fissures and the uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, contaminants could leak into the groundwater and contaminate groundwater uh, and uh, or contaminate neighboring properties. So the you know we've decided to have inspections performed during uh, certain events with Title V. It's called the Massachusetts Title V. If you were to look it up, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection, their Section 5 of their code is for septic and cesspool inspections. A couple of questions that I want to address here. When a septic system must be inspected according to the Department of Environmental Protections. So within a two years of selling your property, if weather conditions prevent inspections at the time of the sale, then the inspection must be done within six months. Here in Massachusetts up north, the ground freezes. You cannot do a septic inspection when the ground is frozen. You can when the ground thaws. So let's say if I'm buying a property in the February here in Mass, I can certainly close on that transaction, but then we have to perform a Title V within six months of uh, the sale closing date. We also have to perform a uh, Title V inspection when there is a proposed change in the use or expansion of the facility which requires a building or an occupancy permit. This does not mean that an inspection is required every time a building permit is needed, rather only when the use of the facility has been changed. Example, from residential to commercial or when the facility is expanded. Example here is when a bedroom is added, square footage of an office building is expanded, or seats are added to a restaurant, all of which would cause or prompt a Title V inspection. Title V inspections are also required during any change in the footprint of a building. Also requires an inspection to determine the location of the system to ensure that the new building construction will not take place on top of any system components or reserve any areas of the system. If official records are available to determine the location of the system components, a physical inspection would then be waived. In addition to that, for large systems with design flows of 10,000 to 15,000 gallons per day or more uh, at full build-out, 
uh, on base and schedule shown on uh, 310 CMR 15.301 subsection 6 and every five years thereafter. When we're talking about shared systems like in large condo complexes, we need to perform a Title V inspection regardless every three years. And when properties divided or ownership of two or more properties is combined, we also must perform a Title V. Or when the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection or local Board of Health orders the citizen to perform an inspection or the business. So these are all the requirements for when we need to get a Title V inspection. There are exceptions to the normal inspection timelines. Inspections in connection with the property sale generally are good for two years. If a facility is sold more than once in a two-year period, a single inspection is valid for all property transfers. If a system is pumped annually and pumping records are kept, an inspection is valid for three years. That's important to note. No inspection is required if the owner or person acquiring title has signed an enforceable agreement with the Board of Health to upgrade the system or connect to a sanitary sewer or a shared system within two years. Cities or towns with DEP approved local inspection programs may have different requirements. So we always should first consult your local Board of Health to see if any different rules happen to apply. Now when we come back we're going to talk about the responsibility for arranging these inspections.